Hi, my name is Menachem Moshelion. I'm a plant physiologist studying all plant water relations. The system I would like to describe to you today is not image based, neither biochemical based system. It is physiological based system, which measures the whole plant physiological response, or as we call it, physiological or functional phenotyping. The system enables you to do a stress test for the plants and get a performance analysis in order to select the plants that are most fitted to your desired conditions. In fact, this is sensor-based system, which each plant is connected continuously to many sensors which measure the plants exactly like this Apple Watch measure the heartbeat. The main challenge in phenotyping the plant environment interactions is the dynamic and cross interaction between the plant and, its, and the environment. Actually, when the shoot respond to the atmosphere, the root also respond to the shoot and the water in the soil respond to the root and so on and so forth. So all in all, we must remember that monitoring the plant is not enough. We have to control and monitor the atmosphere, the soil, the water, and so on. So when we compare many plants together, measuring the plant soil, the plant transpiration, biomass gain, and environment interactions are very, very important. Now, these are important at all conditions. But what happens when you compare the plants to particular strains? For example, in this experiment, we can see a comparison of many introgression tomato lines uh, during one month of experiment. So in A, we see the environmental changes of light and VPD, and in B, we see a pre-treatment where all the plants were well irrigated. Then there is a drought treatment. There we can see a differential response of the different plant, although they look the same, you can see it in the previous slide they respond very differently. So some plants after a week are under severe stress. They actually do not transpire anymore, while other do not feel the stress at all. So we can conclude that it is not recommended to base, to, sorry, to compare the plants based on a daily basis. So how do you know what is the exact stress level your plant suffers? To my opinion, Plant stress response should not be determined by physical parameter like soil water content, but should be determined by physiological parameter like plant transpiration. For example, if we want to set up a drought experiment, we should know what is the drought point or the theta crit, which actually is the physiological point below it plants are under stress. So if we look on this graph, when we measure plant transpiration and soil water content, the point where the soil water content become limiting factor for transpiration, this point here, this is the theta crit. So tomato has higher theta crit than sunflower. The reason for that is the root system of sunflower. Sunflower has much bigger root system, which can actually reach out for more water than tomato. In this case, limiting both plants together will enable sunflower to go to a lower water content because at this uh, water content, sunflower can actually reach more water. So even though both has the same shoot size or transpiration, the theta crit or the point where sunflower become limited is much lower. So if we set up experiment of 50% soil water content, it's not exactly going to expose both of them to the same stress because at this point, tomato will be under stress while sunflower won't. So the conclusion is that controlling drought treatment based on predetermined soil water content may be misleading, which means we need to have standardization of our treatment. This is why we use the plant array system, which is uh, belong to the company named Plant Ditech. So this system is actually built from multiple sensors. So each plant sits on a lysimeter, very special one, has a lot of gadget that prevent water loss from the soil or from uh, any drippage. Each plant controlled to a controller, which uh, measures soil and atmosphere conditions. So each plant is like a resistor measuring the soil, plant, and 
atmosphere condition continuously. Moreover, the controller regulates the irrigation in a feedback way, so each plant being irrigated based on its own physiological parameters. So the controller actually have tap A or tap B. It can control each one of them based on the time, weight, or previous day transpiration. But most importantly, it can actually regulate the plant using a dehydration rate, which means we can set up the exact condition we want to have in the soil and the system will regulate it for us. So we went, when we got coming back to this uh, stress level, we weren't going to get this level of noise or this transpiration level. This is a non-control conventional drought. But rather, we're going to get a very nice and controlled low drought, medium drought, and severe drought. These are averages of all the plants exposed to the similar drought condition. So by the system standardization, we can really get a very similar drought uh, simulation. So the system enables us to control the stress level we want, to measure simultaneously many plants together, and to analyze them in a real time. So all in all, our system measure whole plant biomass gain, the real biomass, not image analysis one, the transpiration, the absolute level of water loss gram per day, water use efficiency, which is the uh, relative water loss per biomass gain, stomatal conductance, which is actually normalized water loss from the whole plant normalized to its weight and the VPD, root fluxes, and also identify the drought point. Uh, the system does it to each plant in, this, in the array. In addition, the system measures a lot of ambient conditions from the soil and from the In fact, there are a few more requirements one has to take when doing stress response of many plants together. Yet, unfortunately, I would not have the time now to talk about those, but please feel free to go to these papers where, it, where it, you can find a nice explanation. I would like now to show you a case study we did with our functional phenotyping system, which enable us to predict yield in the field. We did this experiment together with Professor Danny Zamir from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. In this case, we took uh, well-defined plants uh, that were very stable in the field in terms of yield and biomass, and we screened them on our system uh, using a pretreatment drought treatment and recovery treatment, all compared to non-stress plants. In this experiment, we compared more than 100 parameters from the system and the field, and we screened for both high R-square and low significant probability for all these traits. Altogether, we found that cumulative transpiration show a very nice correlation to both fruit weight and uh, plant fresh weight. While stomatal conductance, the whole canopy stomatal conductance, in particular at the morning time, show a very, very high correlation to yield in early time of the day, between 7 and, and uh, 10 a.m. Sorry. So why is this time is so important for stomatal conductance? So this time was reported previously as the golden hour which means at this time the stomata is widely open while the VPD is relatively low, you can see it here. So there is not so much water loss, but high gain of CO2 and nice photosynthesis because the light is very sufficient. Moreover, this golden hour is being maintained by the plant even under drought condition, as you can see here. There are also other many physiological parameters that could be screened by the system. Unfortunately, I would not have the time today to talk about those, but please feel free to contact me or directly the company. Also, you can go to the booth in this meeting of the company, booth number 116. I would like to thank my students, Sanbon Gossa and Itamar Shenar, that together with Professor Danny Zamir and his student, Amit Koch, performed the experiment I just showed. I would also like to thank Professor Ronnie Volach from the Soil and Water Department in my university. We together actually established this functional system more than 15 years ago. I would like to thank the Israeli Science Foundation and the Minister of Agriculture for supporting uh, me with NICE grants. And I would like to thank you for, the, for your attention. Thank you.